So Jason over at Pixel Tools sent me two of their most popular DCTLs, Prime Grade and Split Tone, to have a play around with and give my honest thoughts. This isn't sponsored, I'm not being paid to say any of this, I just genuinely really like these tools and they've become a part of my look development workflow so I wanted to share it with you guys. If you want to grab a copy of these tools or any of the other ones on their website, you can use the code SDCOLOR to get 10% off when you make the purchase, help support the channel as well. But let me show you how they work. Okay, so a quick note on how I've got things set up. I've got my clips organized into groups and on the pre-clip level, I've just got a color space transform taking my camera space into DaVinci Y gamut. Doing nothing on the post clip, I'm actually working on the timeline level today because I don't have any kind of graphics going on. We have a color space transform taking our footage from DaVinci Y gamut into Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So that's the overview. We're actually going to use both of these DCTLs. We want them happening just before your output color space transform, just because as I mentioned, I use these as look development tools and not necessarily shot by shot level grading, even though you totally could, specifically the prime grade one. If you find that a useful tool that might replace your standard exposure adjustments on your shot by shot level, by all means use it. But for now, I'm just gonna talk about these in terms of creating a look for a project overall. So let's start with prime grade. For those who haven't worked with DCTLs before, we're just going to go over to our effects panel, search for DCTL, drag it on, it's that easy. Then in the DCTL selection box, we're just gonna scroll down until we find our pixel tool selection, and we're gonna select prime grade. Now, instantly we're hit with a lot of sliders, a lot of check boxes, but we're gonna go through these, look at them one by one, so it's not as daunting. Now, first glance, you'll see there is a lot of what appears to be standard adjustments with exposure, contrast, temperature, and tint and saturation. But I find it's the method with which these are applied that uh, kind of game changes. So if we actually scroll down, we get a few options for the modes in which some of these sliders work. So if we look at the top, we have exposure up first, and we get to choose whether that exposure adjustment is applied via linear gain, gain, or offset. When it's in linear gain, it's essentially the same thing as right-clicking on an exposure node and changing the gamma to linear. So it works in a totally uniform kind of adjustment, and it's much more similar to how a camera's exposure would operate. You can see it's applying these exposure adjustments really naturally. We're not clipping anything either. You can see if we switch to gain, it does clip things quite easily. And if we were to use the offset, if we went the other way, it clips our blacks almost immediately. So I do find that most of the defaults for these modes down the bottom here are pretty perfect. So the next one is flare, and I've pulled up a shot here that we can see in the waveform the shadows are quite lifted. So if we use flare in the negative sense, you can see it's shifting only the very bottom of our waveform. I won't go all the way to zero very easily to crush this one too, but if we just make a little adjustment like that, we go full screen here, you can see it's taking a lot of the glare or the flare out of the image that might be caused by a light, or in this case, some sun reflections on the lens. Now, a really good way of seeing exactly what these tools are doing is by using something like an exposure chart. And here I've got the Cullen Kelly exposure chart. I'll link that in the description. Super handy tool to have when you're doing look development. I've got that set up to operate in DaVinci Intermediate. And when we go back here, we reset and we make that flare adjustment. You can see exactly what it's doing. It's not affecting the higher end of the image. It's just affecting those shadows. And you can see with our exposure too, you can see how much it's protecting the bottom and the upper parts of the image. Next we have fill, and that kind of decreases the, the contrast in the lower part of our image. We can change the pivot where that adjustment ends. Be careful about cranking this one too far. If it goes too far, you can see we get some kind of weird artifacting in the roll off there. That's another reason why the exposure chart is so handy. We can really see what it's doing to the entire tone curve. We have contrast, another great one. We can change the contrast mode to S-curve or linear. But the really big differences in this one is temp and tint. DaVinci doesn't have great temp and tint controls, just the standard ones over by the color wheel. It's really quite drastic, unnatural, and it's more so just pushing a warm color over our image, kind of washing over. If we scroll down and check out our balance mode, you can see these temp and tint controls are being applied by linear gain. Now that is a method I've talked about before and in the balance node I have, its gamma is set to linear and all my balancing comes from manipulating the gain wheel as like the exposure adjustment in this DCTL, it's the most natural and the closest we can get to photometric color adjustments rather than just digital pushing color in. If we go up and play with our temperature and tint and see how much more natural they are, 
without clipping or cracking anything. It's just a much more pleasing tool to have. Before we play around with saturation, let's check out the mode. It's currently set to subtractive as default. So subtractive saturation works in a way that it doesn't add more of the color we want to saturate. It instead removes the complementary colors that we don't want, basically. Similar to how light works in the real world, the more red something is, the more it is reflecting or bouncing off the other wavelengths, green and blue, etc. While the green in the trees is becoming more saturated, you can see in our waveform here that blue and the red channels are the only ones moving and they're decreasing in value, so giving more richness to the greens in those leaves there. Then when we get to the bottom here, we have a few handy checkers. We have false color to check exposure. It gives you a good key at the bottom to see where areas might be a bit too hot in your image. And we have a skin checker to see where the skin tones in our image are sitting. They might be too red, too yellow. It helps us refine those. If we kind of adjust our tint to get the most yellow in our image, we turn that skin checker off. And now we've got really beautiful skin tones in there. Another handy one worth mentioning is showing our curves. We can see exactly what our adjustments are doing as we say bring in contrast so if you don't have the exposure chart available this is another handy way of kind of visualizing what the overall tone curve is doing but for now we can turn that off we can move to split tone now there's actually four different dctls included in the split tone we can see there's two for hue and two for rgb one advanced one basic so the hue version of the split tone tool allows you to just select a certain hue along the color wheel that you want to inject into the image in your low end and your high end. The RGB version just gives you a more traditional method of creating your split toning by giving you control over the red, green, and blue channels, kind of similar to how you would create uh, split toning traditionally with your custom curves inside of DaVinci by creating points and introducing colors in the high end taking colors away in the low end to create your split toning. So if you're used to that method, the RGB version of the DCTL is a really handy one to have. I prefer the hue version because I like knowing exactly what color or what hue I'm pushing in to the image and where. So I'm gonna switch over to the hue version. And these top four are really where the look is created. We get the high and the low strength, and then we select which hues we pump into the high and the low parts of our image. And to get a better visual representation of that, we're actually gonna scroll down to show patches. And now it's gonna show us which hue we are selecting. So if we wanted to go for your stereotypical orange and teal look, might select something warm up here, take the low hue, push that towards more of a teal. And now you can see when we introduce the high strength, we can see we're pushing that warmer color into the top half of our image. And when we push the low strength, you can see in the shadows there, it's introducing that teal into the darker parts of our image. If we go before and after, you can see it's really punching those colors in. Definitely way too strong at the moment, so I mean, just dial those back. We also get high and low subtractive and additive sliders. Great ways of controlling whether the split tone you're pushing into the image is adding colors or subtracting them, similar to how that saturation slider in the prime grade works that we we're talking about before. We have an overall blend, so we can control the strength of it, pulling it back to zero. Or if we go the other way, we're doubling the strength of our adjustment. Now, another really handy tool to have is once again, the show curves checker. Turn that on. We can see exactly what the split tone curve is doing to our image. We also get a very clear outline of where the split is and we get to control that with our pivot slider here. So we can change where the low and the high colors are introduced. We also get a neutral pivot. So we can choose how far away or outside of the pivot the colors start being introduced. It's a really good way of preserving your neutral colors around middle gray. Another really handy tool is clean blacks and whites. So if we go to somewhere dark here, it's decreasing the effect it has on the most dark parts of the image. And you can see that as a visual representation in the bottom end of our curve here. It's exactly the same with our clean white slider. You can see it converging back to a neutral white point as it gets to the top of the curve. We will take a quick look at the advanced version of these. All this is doing, if we show our curves again, is it's giving us high, high mid, mid, low mid, and low strength tools. So as opposed to just the high and low version in the basic split tone, we actually get much more granular control over each different part of our split tone curve. For me, I feel like the basic one really does the job for just creating a quick and efficient split tone. But other than that, it's got all of the same adjustments, just gives you more granular control of your split tone. 
So a huge thank you again to Jason for sending me these tools. If you want to grab a copy for yourself, just click the link in the description. Use the discount code SDCOLOR for 10% off. It's really worth the investment for your creative look development. It makes things super quick, super efficient. It's solidified itself as a key part of my look development whenever I'm working on a project. So I hope you found this useful. There's going to be a lot more videos coming out in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be a crazy month. So subscribe to make sure you stay notified when those come out. But otherwise, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.